Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC11, and I'm here with Phil Picorni, who's the CTO of Penguin Computing. Phil, you know, uh, AMD is really shipping now, the Interlagos, and you guys ha had a, a number of significant shipments there. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, so we, uh, we're we very proud of being the uh, to, of, of shipping AMD's first sizable uh, Interlagos cluster. Uh, it was a partnership with the University of Delaware with um, uh, a large number of nodes, both two socket and four socket, uh, together with some uh, lust attached luster storage, uh, full HA, uh, high performance cluster, and a uh, very demanding customer, but we uh, you know, met their time scales, met their price targets, and uh, really delivered a turnkey cluster that uh, just worked out of the box. Now, was, was low power and density, what was their hot, hot buttons there? You think? They were really going for the maximum cores. So Interlagos' ability to, to scale to, to 12 or 16 cores, along with the new floating point units' ability to do eight flops per clock um, with uh, FMA4 instructions, uh, were really key characteristics for them. That They were really looking at that uh, enhanced floating point capability as well as the large number of cores that they could get for a very reasonable price. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's switch gears here, because we were talking earlier about something I didn't know, have any idea was a product, but you ship something around an APU, a cluster of APUs out of desktop parts. Did I get that right? Well, sort of, yeah. We should probably first explain what an APU is. Sure. Everybody knows what CPUs and GPUs are. Uh, AMD has decided to create this new class of products that they call APUs, accelerated processing units. And what makes them different is, is that they're actually the fusion of both CPU cores and GPU cores all on one die. And by combining both of those parts together with the memory controller and the I.O. hub, PCI Express lanes, mm -hmm. we now have basically the entire computer in one silicon, um, and we eliminate a lot of the bottlenecks that would otherwise exist when you have to go chip to chip pack to package on a motherboard. Um, that means that we get, uh, and uh, historically AMD started developing these parts for the, for the laptop market, and so they had very low power budgets um, and limited functionality, and they really weren't appropriate for a high performance computing kind of application. But the, uh, several months ago, they came out with the parts they codenamed LANO, L-L-A-N-O, and uh, the particular part that we deployed in a cluster for this customer, uh, Sandia Labs, was the A83850. And it has a 100 watt power budget because it's designed to be a desktop part, um, gives us uh, 20 lanes of PCI Express so we can support a high performance uh, QDR and FinBand port along with uh, an additional by 8 PCI Express slot that we could use for high performance disk I.O., an additional um, uh, network interfaces or other uh, high performance storage. Um, then the, the, so that's the I.O. part. Then when you look at the, the computational part of this chip, you get four high performance desktop cores, 2.9 gigahertz, um, and you get 400 GPU cores running at 600 megahertz. And the chip has a lot of interesting features. You get that 100 watt power budget, um, and the chip is able to dynamically manage the power budget across the GPU and CPU, so you can get maximum performance out of the GPU when it's the thing that's consuming power, and maximum performance out of the CPU when it's taking the power. Sandia is, is uh, very excited to get this platform. We built them a 104 node cluster uh, in six racks with an InfiniBand interconnect, full bisection bandwidth, you know, a very modern, uh, you know, classic kind of high performance cluster installation. Uh, and they're excited to do software development and algorithm research and well, how does this change of having integrated CPU and GPU cores in one die and the ability of the GPU to share memory and to communicate at very high speeds uh, with the CPU, how does that change algorithms? What is that? What implications does that have for exascale computing? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that, that's always been one of the things people bring up about these accelerators is, oh, you got to bring data across that PCI bus. But this thing has uh, an integrated memory controller. Does, don't they share the, the, they go right to the DRAM? Yeah. Right from the same die. Yeah, so, so on die, the GPU is using the same memory controller as the CPU. So uh, whereas in a, the, previous to this, an OpenCL program would have to, to marshal some data in memory, call that a buffer, send that buffer to the GPU, uh, and, and operate on it and transfer some data back. Now instead, the driver can poker, uh, you can declare that buffer to basically be shared, and so instead of copying the data, it just makes pointers to those to those address ranges in memory available in the GPU space. So it turns out that the GPU actually has its own virtual memory the same way the CPU does in a classic uh, uh, operating system. And so the driver just copies the virtual memory mapping from the from the process that's, that has the buffer into the GPU and tells the GPU, okay, this address here means this address there. So it makes it very natural to to program. 
Um, you don't have to, it, it, as a programmer, you don't have to deal with the memory spaces, and it eliminates that copy step so that when the GPU is operating on that data, uh, it doesn't have to uh, copy it into its own space. It can reference the memory of the host CPU. So kind of a wrap-up question here. Why do you think like a, an operation like Sandia why would they pick uh, Penguin for this kind of, this is a development platform? What, what did you guys bring to the table? Well, and that's, that's one of the things that uh, we're particularly proud of in this particular deployment was is that AMD had been talking to Sandia about the APU and its architecture. And Sandia was like, you know, this is really great, but we want a cluster. And AMD said, well, we don't really build clusters, we just build right. chips. Um, but we can, we'll get somebody. And so mm -hmm. AMD actually came to us and said, we want you to build this cluster for Sandia because we think you're the only people that have the expertise to build an entire cluster with these prototype parts and to solve the challenges of taking a desktop part and turning it into a real compute, a first-class computer. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're very honored that AMD chose us to work on this project, and, and uh, we think that uh, we've delivered a really first-class product to, to Sandia. Oh. And, and, you know, if you call 1888-Penguin, you know, we'll be happy to quote uh, customers their own APU nodes or entire clusters.